Hi guys, it's me, Natalie Lorraine, and welcome to my channel, Nia Shea Healing. I'm back. It's been a while. I had a very um, successful business event last Saturday on the 11th, and it drained me a little bit. The energy was so high that it was exhausting, so I had to spend the next three days um, balancing out my energy again. So I'm back. And it's important as, as healers and as people in general to make sure that you are taking care of yourself fully because if you do not have yourself under control, how do you expect to help others, okay? Now today is my Wild Wednesday video and today it's a little bit different. It's talking about finances. Everybody loves to tell people about how to spend their money, but I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm just here to give you about five tips that I have that has helped me become more financially stable okay so the first tip I would say is to minimize your luxury spending your luxuries okay so a lot of people everybody has something that they love to do that makes them feel happy and for some people that's shopping some people that's eating out some people that is going to the movies some people that is getting your nails done hair done all of those things um going at expensive gym membership whatever that may be but i i encourage you to minimize as many of those luxuries and keep it down to the ones that make the most impact in your life okay so for myself i really do, i like entertainment okay I'm a big avid moviegoer and an avid reader and an avid trashy TV watcher. So those that is my entertainment budget. Instead of spending out of pocket every month to, um, I don't have cable, so it makes it a little bit simpler for me, but I do have access to internet. So the three things in my entertainment budget are I have a Regal Unlimited movie subscription that's about $20 a month that allows me to see as many movies as I want. Then I also have a Kindle Unlimited um, subscription that allows me to read as many books as I want. Um, and of course, I have Netflix and Hulu. So all together, that's 20, 7, 40, about $50 about $50 in entertainment. Now that may be too expensive for some people. Maybe that's not your luxury where you want to spend your luxury. But that is for me and it was important for me to have that those things be under $100. So that allows me to get the most bang out for my money and allows me not to have too many expenses in my budget. Now, the second thing is having a zero sum budget. This is something that I have, I've tried them all and I feel like this one is the most effective for me. I'm a big follower of Dave, Dave Ramsey and there's uh, the budget, budgetista. There's so many people out there and I've been searching over the past probably 15 years trying to find a budgeting tool that worked best for me. The zero sum budget seems to be the most effective because I have learned for myself when I have money at the end of the month that is not uh, supposed to be going towards something, it's easier for me to spend it on things that I don't need. So a zero sum budget means that every, all of your finances, all of your lines in your budget are allotted towards something. So you take your net income for the month or bi-weekly or however you, however you get paid and each line has a purpose so that at once you tally and that's everything that's your eating out budget that is your movie budget that is your rent your utility cell phone bill any trips that you are saving up for everything is accounted for okay and you make sure that you have it i use it in a um, what you call it Google Drive I have it in a Google Drive spreadsheet and um, I keep track of it there and I also I normally write down things that I'm spending but I don't always do that 100% of the time if something's out of place okay but as far as my 
having the zero sum budget it helps a lot okay and that's easy to do just put all your bills in your um, in a spreadsheet and this will help honestly it will help you save more money for retirement if that's a goal for you because for me I had been saving for retirement for a little bit um, but my financial situation has um, varied in my 20s and it's finally getting to a point where I want to be uh, more proactive and consistent so I have prioritized my Roth IRA account so every week every well I get paid bi-weekly um, but every every two weeks I have an allotted amount of money that goes directly from my bank account to my betterment.com account which if you haven't heard about it it's a good tool especially if you kind of want to set and forget type of retirement account it has worked I've had it for uh, let's see I want to say this will be year three I got it in 2017 um, and it's been useful for me and easy to use that's not an advertisement for them, just a recommendation, something I use. So limit luxury spending, zero sum budget. Mm, number three, cook more at home. Now that seems like a more simple, more easier, easier said than done for a lot of people especially if you are not a big cook but i'm here to tell you that cooking for yourself is a lot simpler than you may think i know that i am an avid cook and it's simpler for me to make meals on sundays um, meal prep if that's your thing or cook I normally I have a crock pot and I normally will make some type of um, chicken and rice or stew something I know that it will last a couple days and then I feel at least for dinner and lunches and then I can fill in um, in between with other things that I might pick up um, that helps me a lot and also on tag to that I shop by the week so that limits my food waste and because of my changing taste um, it allows me not to feel guilty and look in my refrigerator and see that there's nothing that I want. So I do still eat out a bit, but for the most part, I make my own meals. So if you're not a cook, I'm telling you YouTube or keep, keep it simple. Salads and sandwiches are simple that a lot of people can do. Um, filling soups as well you can buy them in the can i'm not saying you have to be a chef out here but i'm telling you if you make your own soup and salad combo for lunch it's way cheaper than you making it at panera okay or buying it at panera so that's three cooking at home four this is for my um drinkers out there limit your drinking budget so I actually work at a restaurant and I used to be, like most people in my 20s, I used to drink a lot. So what I've decided to do, um, I normally will buy a bottle of alcohol at the beginning of the month and I let that last me to the end of the month. And that has helped tremendously instead of going out and buying. And then I also do another thing where to limit me buying or drinking, um, I will only drink when I work and I work at a restaurant on the weekends. And normally I'll have one drink after work, maybe two, that'll be like $10 and you know, $40 a month, about the same as me buying a bottle. But um, you know, you do what works for you. I alternate between the two. Um, I do prefer to make my drinks at home but if I know I have to spend full price, I won't drink as much. So that works hand in hand. So cooking, lemon drinking, and five. And this sounds crazy, but have a 
job that allows you to work towards your financial goals, okay? I have learned that a lot of people work at jobs that are working against them. They're not meeting their bare necessities and it stresses them out. And when people are stressed, they spend more money. That is a proven fact. It's how capitalism and consumerism work together. If people are unhappy, they will spend money on things that they don't need to give them a temporary high and they'll do it over and over again. So if you are at a job that's not a spider web, come on now, that is not meeting your financial goals and you're, you're barely making it, it is time to one, find a secondary job or side hustle to supplement that income or find a, another job that makes that pays your bills and fulfills you, okay? One or the other. Some people, fulfillment at jobs is not necessary for them. They prefer to have a hobby on the outside. Others would like to have them combined. So I would say that having a job and being happy, I guess overall, being happy saves you money in the long haul, okay? And with that, I say make sure that you are eating well, spending time, exercising, spending money on quality foods. The farmer's market is a good place. You can get a lot of a lot of fruits and vegetables for under $20. Um, and exercising, you don't have to have an expensive um, gym membership, but you know there's a lot of YouTube fitness um, gurus out there that have free content that you can use. And then a lot of them have monthly subscriptions that are like, below $50, way cheaper than um, going to a Lifetime Fitness or O2 Fitness or what's that other one, Orange Theory, because I'm not a fan of, uh, what you call it, Planet, Planet Fitness? I'm not a fan, not a fan of that. But I know that's the cheapest one out of there, but a lot of people don't like Planet Fitness either. Anyways, so those are my five tips. I'm going to recap, just in case you missed it. Number one, what was number one? lord my brain i'm just gonna list them number one i believe was oh yeah i remember sorry <laughs> limit your luxury spending number two was having a zero sum budget number three was learning to eat out less number four was limiting your drinking budget and number five was make sure you have a job that sustains your basic necessities and helps towards your future financial goals. And with that, that is also eating healthily and exercising and being happy because happy people spend less money. Okay, so that is all I have today. I love you guys and I will be posting a weekly video on Friday for the next week. That is how I'm going to do it now. I love the dailies, but my schedule is getting busier. So I want to have a schedule that is um, easier for me to maintain. So I will be doing a Wednesday video, a wild Wednesday video and a Friday video that is a weekly video that will be a little bit longer and it will cover all of the zodiac signs. All right, I love you guys and I'll see you Friday. Ashe.